Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Today, I'm going to talk about maps. But first, let's start talking a bit about myself. Because my name is uh, quite weird to pronounce, so I will just present myself. I am Guillem Duran Ballesté. Oh. These are my Twitter and GitHub accounts. And when I was younger, I wanted to be a hacker. So that's why I studied telecommunications engineering. But for the last five years, I've been more focused on learning Python and data science and trying to invent my own artificial intelligence algorithms. I'm currently working in Madrid at Source, which is a really good startup. But I am from Mallorca, and I'm actually really proud to be one of the organizers of the meetups from PyData that we hold there. Why am I here? Well, oh, now it works actually better. Do you hear me well? Yeah. A few months ago, Biel Stella, who's a friend of mine, found inside Airbnb.com which is a website that periodically scraps Airbnb and makes the data available to the public. He wanted to study how Airbnb influences the real estate market, but he has no, had no way to make cool visualization about his findings. You can see here how Insight Airbnb collects data sets from all over the world, but mainly from North America and Europe. And well, we also have some data sets from Australia and Hong Kong. Each one of these data sets whoop, contains 92 different columns with a very wide range of features, such as how the information was scrapped, listing features about the daily price for, of a renting, uh, how many bedrooms or bathrooms it has, and so forth, and also has location features, like the GPS coordinates that I displayed on the maps in the um, in the Insight Airbnb webpage, the booking requirements that an owner makes to, to be able to rent his listing, and also information about how the people who rented a listing reviewed that listing. Uh, we will be using data from both Mallorca and Barcelona, and well, each one of these data sets contains 14K in columns and 17K columns respectively, so it's in the range of what a browser can handle easily. So this could not be considered big data. This is one of the visualizations that the Insight Airbnb webpage has, which shows how the Airbnb listings are distributed in Barcelona. Here, for example, you can see in green listings that correspond to a whole apartment or house. In red, you can see the ones corresponding to one room, and there's a few one here in blue that corresponds to rooms that I shared. If you go to the website, you can see the same representation, but for data from Mallorca, and you can inspect it, zoom in, and it actually works quite well when you have enough RAM, and has cool tooltips and filtering options. But I think this is written in JavaScript, and this is EuroPython. So I wanted to make a tutorial on how to display this data. Plotting maps is easy, but it can really be a pain in the ass if you don't know how to do it. So I wanted to make a tutorial for people that wanted to try to plot geographical locations but had no idea on how to start. So I can at least save them a few hours if they just download the repository and clone it. So today, we will talk about how to plot Google Maps using Bokeh, how to work with shape files, which are a data format to work with geographical locations, how we can plot these shape files using all of views and geo views, and how we can um, use big data to make cool representations with data shader. So let's get hand on on the notebooks. These notebooks are meant to be used with any data set available in Insert Airbnb, but as I am from Mallorca, I will be mainly using the data set from the island. 
So uh, how many of you know Bokeh? Please raise your hand. OK, there's a lot of people here. Well, the ones that you know, please check the documentation. It's an awesome package for making any kind of visualizations. And the ones who already know it will find it extremely easy to work with Google Maps. It is basically like building uh, a regular figure object, but with additional features in order to um, indicate how we want our maps to be displayed. We will need to, to input the latitude and longitude coordinates of the center of the map, the zoom level ranging from one, which is for the whole world to like 20, which is the max zoom you can get on Google Maps. You also will need a JavaScript Google Maps API key, and you also need to stay which kind of layout do you want your map to be displayed. For example, we have the roadmap layout, which is like the map that already know, that we all know. We also have the satellite layout, which is more like a Google Earth style, and the hybrid layout. Then, that is like, just like the satellite layout, but it also has an additional layer. Well, let's wait for the internet to load. Mm. Now, this is the last layout, the terrain layout, which is almost loud, um, like the roadmap layout, but with an additional feature that highlight terrain features. And the one that I wanted to show you before, which is the hybrid layout, is like just like the satellite one, but with an additional layer which shows roads and names of places. So one we have, once we have created our plot, we will go for the first example. In this example, I will try to recreate the plot, well, to recreate the plot from inside Airbnb. So now that we have the roadmap layout, we need to embed data on top of it. This embedding will be done by creating just a regular scatter plot. Well, we will assign visual properties to each one of the points. So first, we will select a suitable color map in order to mimic the plot that we are going to replicate. So we will select a diverging green, white, red color map and assign it three colors. And now we only need to create a scatter plot where the X and Y coordinates of our plot will be the latitude and longitude coordinates from each one of the listings. And we get a pretty cool plot, which given the amount of code that took to build, looks actually pretty similar to the one that we had here. Of course, this can be improved having I mean, filtering and additional and more worked uh, tooltips, but I think it's actually pretty good. <laughs> well, we are working with a number of points that can be managed by a browser easily, but sometimes it can be handy to aggregate data uh, over regions. Uh, as we cannot trust the region data that it's embedded in the data set, uh, we will have to download um, shapefile with all the geographic data of all the regions in Spain. A shapefile is a vector format for geographical data representations. Each one of the shape files can contain different records, and each record contains both a geometry and different attributes. This geometry thing is handled with Shapely, which is a Python library that allows to work with planar geometrical objects, and each one of the attributes is stored in the form of a Python dictionary. As we are getting all the um, regions in Spain, we would like to filter out that, uh, um, that ones that do not correspond to Mallorca. So um, looking at the record attributes that we have, we find this Kotnut 3 code, which turns out to be 
uh, standard way for representing geographical regions in Europe. Here you can see all the cut not codes that belong to Europe at the level three. And it turns out that Mallorca is assigned the code ES532. So we all, oh, whoops. So we only need to iterate through each one of our records and store the ones that belong to Mallorca. Now we have, on the one hand, all the shape files, all the shape records corresponding to the island and a lot of GPS coordinates. So if we want to match one with the others, we will have to think some, some way to do it. What we will do? Okay, we will take the Shapely library and create a point object using the GPS coordinates of each one of the listings. Once we have created this point, we will be able to calculate distance between that point and each one of the regions that we already have stored. When we find one which distance is zero, we will just store the name of the region that was that we found inside the column of the data frame. This way, we will be able to aggregate the data by the regions that we just calculated. And now that we already have the shape files of the regions that we're interested in plotting and the aggregated data, we will use all of views and zero views to plot it. Uh, please raise your hand, the ones who know what is all of views. No one? Oh, great. And GeoViews, have you ever used it? Okay. They are actually two really cool libraries which allows to do really complex visualizations really easily. And they can use as a backend Matplotlib, Bokeh, or Plotly. And well, GeoViews is an extension of all of views that allows to also, for also working with geographical data. So we will load all of views and GeoViews, and we will create a data set from the aggregated data frame that we had. Now, we only have to select the shape files that we want to plot, the data set, and a series of attributes that will create the visualization. In this case, we will choose on, which is the common key on we will join the data, a key from the attributes of the shape files, and from a column in our data frame. Value, which is the column in the data frame that will be used to assign colors to each one of the regions. Index, that are a list containing the name of the columns that will be used in the tooltip. Group, which is used to state the name of the plot. And finally, CRS, which is the kind of uh, projection that we, will be, that we will be using. In this case, it's plate curry. Once we have done that, we can use cell magics to state how we, wanna how we want the visual options of the plot to be displayed. For example, we can choose to eliminate the axis, use a hover tool, the size of the plot, or even how we want the colors to be mapped. And here, we can see how we started with a scalar plot of a lot of points, and we were able to map them into this shape plot where each one of the regions is colored according to the number of listings that it has. For example, we can do more things with that, like aggregating the data and coloring by different properties. So here we have a comparison. Perfect. A comparison um, of the number of listings in each one of the regions in Mallorca against the medium price per day that each region has. For example, here, which is Palma de Mallorca, the capital, has the most number of listings, but it also turns out to be the most cheaper one. So when you have a lot of money and want to be alone, just go to the northern part of the island to the yeah. And now, before moving on to data shader and big data, I wanted to show you one cool thing that my friend Biel Estela did. He used the Barcelona data set and various data sources to try to figure out how many listings in Airbnb there was compared to the total number of houses in Barcelona. 
Airbnb usually states that it cannot influence the real estate market because the proportion of listings that it has to the total number of, but to the total portion of the real estate market is really low. That is true unless you group the data by different neighborhoods. So he first created a plot of all the different neighborhoods in Barcelona, and then merging different data sources, he calculated the proportion of Airbnb listings to the total market of real, real estate market. And we find that, okay, it's true that if we take the whole city, the proportion of Airbnb, Airbnb listings is really low, but if we go to the center of the city, we found that, for example, in El Barri Gothic, there's 14% of all the houses available that, are, that can be rented using Airbnb. And the colliding neighborhoods, you find that this proportion is about 10 or 11%. So it really has a great impact if almost one in 10 houses in your neighborhood are occupied by tourists and available in, it, in, in Airbnb. Well, now that we've finished with all of views and geoviews, let's talk a bit about data shader. Uh, how many of you know data shader? Have you ever heard this word before? Whoa, I have one. <laughs> nice. Well, data shader is actually a really good packet, uh, which is meant to make easy uploading big data. There's a lot of examples in the form of Jupyter Notebooks that you can just check here. But I will explain it's a bit its inner workings. It mainly consists on a three-step pipeline which allows to turn big da data into images. How is this process accomplished? Well, first we have a projection step in which we will define an um, image container. This image will be treated um, sort of a two-dimensional histogram and assign different bins. In the next step, the data will be aggregated in a meaningful way, such as the count or you can use any aggregation fun function you want in order to map the data into that bins that we created in the first step. And finally, we can choose how we want the visual properties of each one of the bins to be displayed. Using these three steps, we finally get an image which has all the data that we want it aggregated. For example, if we wanted to show a data shader representation of the listings in Mallorca, we first define a canvas as a projection, then we use CVS that point with the listings, X and Y axis, and the function that we will use to aggregate the data, and finally, we pass that, that aggregated data and select the kind of color map that we will use, in this case it's hot, and we will indicate that we wanna map the colors logarithmically to, the, to each one of the bins. And then I also choose to have a light gray background so it's easier to see. And this is what we get. In order to understand better how this binning process works, let's compare a regular scatter plot with a representation of a data, well, with a data shader image. One moment, this. Okay, so as you, can he, as you can see here, where in the scatter plot, a high density of points is just represented by a blue mass, data shader allows to change the color according to the density of points. And if we zoom in, we can see how the bins, how the data is mapped into bins. These are each one of the bins created with an heuristic, and each one is colored according to the number of points that fell into that bin. Of course, this is a pretty and aesthetically, aesthetically unpleasant effect. So if you 
change this dynamic attribute here to true, all the plotting pipeline from data shader will be recalculated each time. So when you zoom in, these bins will automatically adjust to the data that it's included in the image. You have to take into account that the coloring is also taking into account only the number of, of points that are included in the image and not the whole data set. So we do mapping data and zooming in, you can see how the map scheme changes uh, according to the points that I displayed. So now that we already know how to display big data with data shader, we will explain how uh, it can be overlaid on top of a map. Unfortunately, here we do not have Google Maps, so we cannot access the Google Map plot like we did before, and we'll have to think some other way of doing it. In this case, we need to do a few steps because we will be using something called uh, tile sources, which is basically uh, it's basically a class that if you pass it a proper rule. As a, param as a parameter, it will just download an image each time that it is called. So in this case, creating the class RG from WM STY tile source, and passing this, this URL, we will later get an image representation. The downside of it is that it uses a different cartographic projection. So if you want to use OpenStreetMap instead of Google Maps, we will have to transform the coordinates from one projection to the other. In this case, we have created a function that takes data frame as input and transforms the longitudes and latitudes from the plate career projection to the Google Mercator one. In order to create the plot, uh, a map plot with data shader, it's quite similar to the way that we did it with Google Maps, but we will need, you will need to figure out which are the coordinates that correspond to the center of the map. Sorry, instead of the center of the map, you have to define the ranges of geographical coordinates that you want to have displayed. So it takes a little bit of tweaking, and it's, it's not easy, but once you have found the right numbers, it's, it looks like this. So this map is not as cool as the Google Maps one, but at least you can still zoom in and all the pipeline is recalculated each time. And the more you zoom in, the cooler it gets the map. Uh, you have to take into account that even though these are just 17k points, all the, um, the time it takes to aggregate the data and use it, it's pretty much dissimilar from this size to like 100 or 2000, uh, 200 megabytes. But it also building an image with, uh, with big data, like using the Tatsi data set, which is included in the examples that I showed you before, like creating or the census data, oh, or the census uh, data set from the United States is actually quite fast. It's a, really pay, it's a bit painful to install all these all these examples, but you have a really nice tutorial there on how to do that. It takes a while to download all the data sets, but you should totally check them out because it's totally worth it. But well, what are the downsides of using data shader? To, to work with, with, with big data in the notebook. Well, uh, unfortunately, everything related to interactivity does not work pretty well unless you are using um, the, the options that I included in Data Shader to build widgets, but you have not total control over what you are plotting. 
for example, I try to build here um, a dashboard that showed how aggregating data works with data shader. And if you are just using this image, it, this image, it works quite well. But for example, if you want to change how you aggregate the data, for example, if you wanted to aggregate the data by the match price of each one of the listings that fall inside uh, each one of the bins, you get errors that you are not able to silence until you get it right and the image is recalculated. And also, please do not use the reset tooltip because it messes everything up. Well, now it will be really nice. I can talk a bit more about JSON data and I can show you some examples, but I would really like you to ask questions. So I will just finish my talk here and let you ask whatever you, can, whom you want. I'm not really an expert on this topic, so maybe you think of a question which is quite difficult. I won't be able to answer it, and you can laugh at me. So thank you very much for being here, and it's been a pleasure to be talking about maps. Thank you. So if you are, well, there is plenty of time of questions, or you are finished? I would really like you to ask questions. I can keep talking if you want, because there have been like 27 minutes and I have more material, but please, come on, participate a bit. There's a lot of people in here, so what would you like to know about plotting data on maps? So hands up, please. Or well, stand up, that's better. And my question, thank you very much. It, it was very useful. Uh, the, my question is regarding the shapes. When you painted like the shapes of, I don't know if it was the re different regions of Mallorca and the density of points in, in that area, I had to do that at, at wall scale. And from the files I've got, the precision was very accurate and the, the data was massive. And it was impossible to plot anything. So, I mean, the shape of the United States, I don't know how many points there are there, but if you have like one point every two meters, it's like huge, and, and I never managed to plot anything with that data. Do you have anything to just compress this, or did you have to use anything like that? I think if you're using shape files, you are screwed, because I also try to do that with the whole regions in Spain, which is not a lot, but it was totally impossible because I got a lot of lag and the browser just cannot handle so many points. So you have to resort to data shader, but the good thing is that it can be used to plot data from all over the world. It actually has one example in which it's used data from satellites that shows really well how all this works. But yeah, unfortunately, if you are using shape files, you are screwed. So you have to figure out some way. You could aggregate the data and pass it, try to create an image using data shader for the data that you have aggregated, but it won't be easy. So maybe you should contact James Bender, who's the main maintainer of, of these packages, and ask him how to do it. They actually answer really fast in GitHub. So if you open an issue, there will be a few, hour, a few hours until they respond. So, further questions? Ah. It's a Python conference, so you presented Python solution. Is that the best technology to display such solution, such uh, information? I did not understood you, because when you ah, talk sorry. with the mic here, it reverbs a lot. Okay. Can you please yeah. come down and ask me? <laughs> you 
said it's Python conference, so you presented Python solution. Is that the best technology to display that, or is there some alternative? It depends on what you, ha you want to do. It can, if you're using the notebook, you can achieve almost anything, but if you are a real pro and have a lot of investors worried about how you're displaying the data, maybe you should use JavaScript, because it will be easier to do some really handmade JavaScript tricks that are really specific for, for the kind of representation that you want. But if you want to build something a bit more general really easily, just uh, fall back to all of views and J of views because it's really easy and it takes a few lines of code to do something really complicated. For example, the plots here, a uh, few years ago, I tried to do something similar with plotting all the patches. And it was uh, an example on the first versions of Bokeh about the census in the United States of, the, of America. And there were like 70, uh, 70 lines of code which has to be really carefully thought because it was really easy to mess up. So this is getting every day easier and easier to use. Now the most pro thing is JavaScript, but if you wait a couple of months or years, you will get the same things here in the notebook. And this can also be used using the Bokeh server. So if you don't like the notebooks, you can try to do it there. It's a pain, but it can work. Um, come, come down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I almost heard you. <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely use this to prototype the visualizations, and if you need something really specific, you can resort to JavaScript. To JavaScript. But even with things like the tooltips, uh, Bokeh allows to play a lot with it, so you can embed arbitrary HTML code inside of them. So almost anything can be accomplished, but yes, if you are a pro, go to JavaScript. So, who's the next? Uh, please, can you come downstairs? It's much better to, uh, we need the question on the video too, and also he wants to understand you. So, anyone with questions, please come down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Um, can you show us an example of how to uh, visualize time series data? Visualize time series data. Yeah, I cannot. I do not have it loaded here, but there's an example. Oh, let me think. Okay. Here are a few examples. For example, here, which is a visualization. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. Whoop on the population of some cities. You just enter a proper formatted data frame, and as I told you before, there are like custom widgets that can be used with all of views and geo views, so you can use them to visualize how things are evolving in time on top of a map. Depending on the specific kind of visualization that we're gonna do, I can point you some resources, but here you can find a few things about how to do that. And also in the examples from all of you, I think there was, well, merging these two examples, you should be able to, to work with data and maps and make cool dashboards. We, will, we can talk later about it if you want. Uh, oh, okay. Hello. Thank you for inspiring talk. Uh, I got a question maybe unrelated to geodata, but is there any convenient way to create a custom uh, shaped map, uh, for instance, from TFI, a TIF texture, to get the custom uh, map view, for instance, for game, some game data, game level data? I, I mean, is there a way to create a ca custom map to load and visual visualize the data over it? Yeah, what kind of custom map are you referring to? 
I mean, for instance, you, get, you have a in-game level and you, you have a player activity uh, data uh, and you need to visualize it. So you, you have okay. an, an actual geometry with uh, some coordinates. So is there any way to load such uh, a level right into these tools? Yeah, there are actually very different ways to deal with all these things, but there's a package called Cartopy, which allows you to get images in all of the coordinate representation that you need. Uh, let me check for an example. Well, for example, here there are different types of visualization using Cartopy. For example, you have like the, ma the whole world map here in to be plot with Maplotlib. Uh, Take into account that all the weird uh, projections and all that, I'm not sure if it's work with Bokeh. Maybe you have to do it by hand and be converting from one coordinate system to the other in order to then plot them as a scatter plot. But Cartopy has not only all everything you need to switch from one coordinate system to the other, but also has stored visual representations of maps. So in a similar way as we did with the uh, Google Map Plot, you are able to select how you want your maps to be displayed. Wait a moment, let's see if I can find. Uh, Yeah, here you have a lot of different map representations, so it's really possible that you are able to find the one that you need. And if you're not, write Jens Bender, bother him. Okay, can you come please down for questions? You have one? No? Any you question? want me to torture you with GeoJSON data? Nah, that's just a joke. I no. won't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's easy. Thanks. Uh, do you know if it's uh, possible to integrate OpenStreetMap with Bokeh, for instance? Uh, what is it? OpenStreetMap? It should be possible. I have not tried it because uh, I think that Google Maps are way cooler, at least in the point in which they are now. But I can look at it and tell you later. We'll try to search it. I have never done it myself before. OK. Next question, two. Any question? There. <laughs> OK. Um, can you come and speak to the microphone and directly to him? Otherwise, it's difficult to understand for him. The microphone is for the video. Yeah, it's like the mic is for the people in YouTube, but if you use that, I cannot hear you well from here, so. Um, um, if, you, if you put the data into a bokeh, what, what do you get? Uh, is it um, um, some kind of JavaScript, or uh, I didn't understand it really? I'm not understanding your question. <laughs> um, if I saw all those um, bokeh uh, uh, calls, something like this, and some map mysteriously appeared. Um, what do you get if you put data into bokeh? Uh, is it some kind of JavaScript uh, that you can put on a website? or? Yes. Well, if you wanted to study thoroughly all this data from Airbnb, first go to the repository of my friend who's this one, because they did an in-depth study on how data from Airbnb affects the market. And if you wanted to plot it outside, outside the Jupyter notebook, you would have 
to uh, use the bokeh server. It's, uh, I don't like it because it's really difficult to configure for me at least, but it can work really well if you know what you're doing. So you could also be using uh, data shader, all of you, and all of you, using bokeh as a backend and using the bokeh server to render the plots and then send them as HTML code and JavaScript into a regular website. Because Bokeh is using JavaScript as a backend. So if you're using the Bokeh server to render the plot, a uh, plot from Bokeh looks like a regular HTML code that you can embed in your website. Last chance for a question. Yeah, you can find all these notebooks on GitHub. So when you want to plot maps, just uh, clone the repo and copy paste. And if you want to find, if you want to know the findings of my friend when he analyzed the Airbnb data, then go to this repository. Mine will be in my, oh, what is this one? My username in GitHub is GMDB. Uh, and the project is inside Airbnb EuroPython 17. And here you will be able to find everything that I explained here. Ah, yep. please come downside. <laughs> no. Please speak to the microphone, but directly to him. I wanted something, uh, someone to ask me this. <laughs> I did not forget to put the data into the repository. It was too big for a GitHub repo, so I have uploaded that into my Google Drive account. So I don't know which is the link, but I will put it in the repository, okay? Uh, I don't know where it is. Now, uh, here. See, I have all the data inside the zip file that I will commit to my repository when I finish the talk in about 10 minutes or so, okay? So, last chance. Otherwise, get him for a coffee or so. Well, it's been a pleasure having you as a public, because it's like <laughs> the time that I have been asking okay. more questions in my entire life. So thank you very much, everyone.